Hi everybody, my name is Nisha Danti. I'm a cardiac hospitalist at UCSF. And uh, we're here with Dr. Tita, Alan Tita today. And um, he is going to tell us briefly about his late-breaking clinical trial titled Antihypertensive Therapy for Mild Chronic Hypertension and Pregnancy Outcomes, a Pragmatic Multicenter RCT. And this is part of the CHAP study. So just a little introduction, Dr. Alan Tita is the uh, University of Alabama, Birmingham, John C. Hoth, MD, Endowed Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Vice Chair for Research Director at the Center of Women's Reproductive Health, and Principal Investigator of the NIH CHD Maternal Fetal Medicine Units Network Center. He is also the Dean of Global and Women's Health at the University of Alabama, at Birmingham School of Medicine. So thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, and if you don't mind, can you just please tell us a little bit about your late-breaking trial? Uh, thank you so much for that introduction and uh, for the invitation. Um, it is, uh, you know, my really great pleasure and honor to talk about the CHAP trial. Uh, this trial has been 10 years in the making, and the primary goal was to evaluate the benefits and safety of antihypertensive therapy in pregnancy in patients who have what is called non-severe uh, chronic hypertension. And, and frankly, this is still a very serious uh, uh, hypertension because it's uh, uh, part of the ACC stage two hypertension. So uh, thank you. And you mentioned it's 10 years in the making. Um, tell us a little bit more about uh, some of the challenges that came up when organizing this study and um, sort of the limitations of prior studies that needed to be overcome. Really great question. I, I think uh, the main challenges we faced were uh, a, a challenge that had to do with accrual, uh, getting all of these sites. We ended up, uh, started with about 14 sites and ended up with 61 sites uh, enrolling uh, after talking to about 70. So that was a main, uh, major challenge, getting the sample size uh, accomplished. Um, our uh, look at the literature indicated that there were uh, studies and small trials that suggested that treating women with mild chronic hypertension would reduce their uh, likelihood of progressing to severe uh, chronic hypertension, but there were no uh, suggestions that this would reduce um, adverse pregnancy outcomes. Um, so we uh, decided to mount a much uh, larger and powered uh, trial to get at pregnancy outcomes. So uh, what we did was enroll uh, over 2,400 uh, pregnant women, uh, randomize them to active treatment to a goal less than 140 over 90, or to no treatment unless their blood pressure became uh, more severe, uh, above 160, uh, 105. We followed them uh, from early in pregnancy through um, uh, six weeks postpartum, and uh, I'll go directly to, the, to our findings. We uh, found that our primary outcome, which was a composite of several uh, important uh, adverse pregnancy outcomes, including preeclampsia, which is, which is a pregnancy-specific uh, complication, and preterm birth uh, prior to 35 weeks, uh, this primary outcome was reduced in those actively uh, treated compared to those who were not, um, reduced about 20%. And, and this uh, meant that we would have to treat only about 14 to 15 women to reduce one primary outcome. Wow, that's, that's incredible uh, outcome. Thank you so much. Uh, one other question I had was, um, what kind of medicines were you using to treat these women and what kind of dosages were they um, also receiving? That's a great question, and, and this was what we would uh, term a pragmatic trial. So we, we looked at not just one medication, uh, we looked at multiple medications, but we focused on the uh, top two used in pregnancy, uh, which are labetalol uh, or uh, nifedipine extended release. So about two-thirds of the women in this trial got uh, labetalol, and one-third got uh, uh, nifedipine. Uh, less than 2% uh, or less got other medications. Uh, those first two were provided by the study and uh, uh, all th those who wanted other medications had to get those medications uh, on their own. We look forward to uh, 
uh, additional findings that compare labetalol and uh, nifedipine and the, and the outcomes associated with them. An additional question I had, um, how did lifestyle interventions play into this as well? Did, were women advised to lose weight or do the traditional um, uh, modifiable interventions during their pregnancy as well? Yeah, another great uh, question. Thank you. Um, so this study focused on antihypertensive uh, therapy and then everything else was per usual protocol at participating uh, sites. So lifestyle measures were encouraged and uh, uh, to be used as uh, the sites would typically use them as as was other in event, uh, as were other interventions such as aspirin um, such as uh, surveillance of these pregnancies timing of clinical visits timing in general of delivery we left a good number of um, potential interventions at the discretion of clinical providers and focused on blood pressure management and uh, uh, measurement Thank you. And after, so you mentioned that um, these women were followed for six weeks postpartum as well. Uh, did you find that their overall blood pressures improved after pregnancy just by the process of um, giving birth? So this is a, a great question and uh, 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 let me, we, that's a, a great question. Um, I believe the uh, and we have to take a deeper dive into this, but I believe those who were uh, t uh, treated uh, ended up with better uh, outcomes in terms of hypertension. So they were uh, less likely to have uh, severe hypertension even uh, after uh, delivery. Uh, let me also quickly get back to another question uh, you had with respect to dosing of the medications. Um, we utilize the usual uh, clinical doses uh, at the discretion of providers, um, which would include uh, starting at the uh, lowest dose possible and then escalating during clinic visits as needed based on the blood pressures. Now for patients who came in already on medication, um, we allowed them to continue at their usual dose if they were randomized to the active treatment group. If they were not, then uh, treatment was uh, discontinued until uh, there was an indication to reinitiate treatment. Thank you. Um, I think that's all the questions I have. Um, is there anything else you would like to highlight about the study on your end? Yes, I probably will uh, like to uh, just uh, provide a brief summary of the study. Again, for 30 years we have uh, had this question, even more than 30 years, should we treat women uh, with mild chronic hypertension. And this is the majority of women uh, who come into pregnancy and have uh, chronic hypertension. 70 to 80 percent have what would be considered uh, mild. It is also important to keep in mind that about 2 percent of uh, pregnancies are to women with chronic hypertension. But this number continues to increase in the U.S. because of older age at childbirth as well as the uh, ob uh, obes obesity uh, epidemic. So uh, this study also enrolled disproportionately uh, black women who are affected by this uh, condition of chronic hypertension. So in many ways, uh, this may contribute and we'll have to look at this into uh, narrowing some of the disparities in in pregnancy outcomes and uh, in pregnancy related uh, mortality but the bottom line is that it's uh, we're very excited about these findings which suggest that we should treat pregnant women who have mild chronic hypertension in fact who have any uh, type of chronic hypertension with medications to reduce their blood pressure to less than 140 over 90. Uh, uh, really, thank you very much for the interest in our study, and uh, I am uh, uh, happy to provide additional information as needed.